Hey everybody, Peptide Buddy here. Today we're going to be talking about what I think is one of the coolest peptides ever and what I imagine and will assure you actually will be one of the most researched peptides of all time. It's Joe Rogan's favorite peptide, BPC-157. I know Rogan himself has claimed to use it to help heal injuries and it's really popular within the bodybuilding and optimization spaces. I thought this would be a one-time video, but after reading some of the research, I figured this would be one within a series. It's involved in like a million different biochemical and physiologic processes in things large and small alike, from endothelial damage to altered gene expression, and just gene expression itself can be a 10-part series. So this will be a broad... Uh, overview as usual as always cut to the chase and evidence-based let's do it so this is important just you know please like and subscribe I think it's the best way to support the channel um, and the only way to support the channel and uh, I kind of I love making these videos and it's great to kind of get the comments and the support and spur the conversations already and uh, let's just keep it going so thank you all in advance all right, so we can see why Joe Rogan would be interested in this compound, given the name itself. Although it has different names and kind of derived from chemical, um, its chemical formation essentially, the big one is BPC-157, Body Protection Compound. That sounds baller, doesn't it? And it really is, uh, despite the fact that we need a ton more human research, and we've already had a fair amount as well as research in mice. Um, it's important to note that it's really multifaceted in what it's involved with. Um, although its hallmark is recovery and regeneration, you'll see that there's really a lot that it does. Um, and it's a gastric pentadecapeptide, so composed of 15 amino acids. And gastric, it's, it's really interesting because it is essentially derived from our gastric juices, the body protection compound. And there are oral, topical, injectable forms, and of note, it's banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency. So obviously, it's got some, some powerful mechanics going on. All right, so this is the big slide. So I'm really going to kind of make videos on all these different topics because... Talking about each of these things, like just going down this list, each of these bullet points could be made into a 20-minute video, at least. So I'm going to tell you just kind of what I read um, and what I've derived from research. So physiologic involvement of BPC-157 structurally, musculoskeletal involvement, osteogenic effects, healing of injuries uh, in muscle, tendons, and ligaments. There's a lot of wound healing properties from collagen formation to recruitment of fibroblasts and macrophages, and even anti-ulcer properties, which is pretty cool because, you know, as something that's derived from essentially the gut, we know that it's not uncommon for people to have ulcers in their belly. Um, for instance, caused by NSAIDs, things like ibuprofen or Advil. And so there's definitely like this application that's really cool, directly involvement in preventing or healing these sorts of interest injuries. There's lots of vasodilatory effects. Um, Involvement with nitric oxide, which is um, a vasodilator, relaxes, expands the blood vessels, um, improves blood flow and its efficacy, angiogenesis, um, so essentially the promotion of new blood vessels and improved blood flow once again. Um, research has shown prevention of clot formation, increased effective blood flow with counteraction of different blood and bleeding disorders, things like thrombocytopenia, um, CNS or a central nervous system. I'm going to do a video on this itself, but it's currently being investigated um, 
in MS, multiple sclerosis, and you know, given it's such a regenerative uh, compound and that multiple sclerosis is essentially demyelination um, or plaques that are preventing the transition, excuse me, transmission of nerve signals and their propagation, possibly, you know, repair in the brain could help with it. Um, a lot of GI research, especially in mice, you know, things being looked at are ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and there's been a lot of interesting fistular healing, um, the esophagus, duodenum, colonic, rectovaginal, um, you know, bladder issues. Um, on top of that, there's antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects and benefits in altering DNA expression. So possible long-term beneficial implications. So besides, you know, the normal risks of ingested or injected drugs, things like headache, fatigue, dizziness, um, rolling cancer formation, which is usually the scariest thing when it comes to peptides for me, um, because a lot of these peptides play a role in, you know, more directly in just kind of the growth hormone pathway rather than just agonizing a bunch of these processes like this pentadeca peptide does. Um, usually when we make things grow in the body, it can affect the good things and the bad things. And when I see things like um, angiogenesis, um, I'm thinking, okay, you know, maybe we're, we could possibly increase blood flow and growth to things that we don't want growing. However, the rolling cancer formation is yet to be determined in this case. And with all these antioxidant properties and healing properties and positive changes in DNA expression, perhaps maybe it has a negative impact on the growth of cancer. Um, so, you know, this is the broadest of overviews that's just been kind of gathered from some research that I've done. And as I said before, we're going to be making some upcoming videos. So just three that I've already kind of started preparing at this point are musculoskeletal, ligamentous, muscle, bone, um, osteogenic, healing properties, that sort of thing, wound healing, and one on the nervous system because I think that's super cool as well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. We're just scratching the surface, my friends, so stay tuned. Please like and subscribe, and as always, take care, my friends.